Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Steve, a Scottish wild camper, explorer, and adventurer. So if this is something you're interested in, then click the subscription button and follow me on my wild adventures around Scotland. So back in May 2023, I set out on a solo bikepacking adventure, wild camping around the North Coast 500, taking 20 days. I was also doing this for charity, the Trussell Trust, who deal with food banks and food poverty. I was raising funds for those that are finding it extremely difficult to feed themselves and their families. The North Coast 500 starts at Inverness and covers over 500 miles of the north coast of Scotland. A fairly new route that reaches some of the most incredible places in Scotland, with breathtaking scenery, views and stunning beaches. This adventure would test me physically and mentally and push me to a new level. I will be alone and will have to deal with whatever the North Coast 500 throws at me. This is the bike I will be doing my adventure on. It's a white 801 mountain bike with Ortley bags on the back at 40 litres each and Rhino Walk handlebar bags on the front. The bike itself has been serviced and prepped, ready for this adventure. This was going to be some adventure, for sure. So sit back and let me take you camping on the wild side. After stopping the night in a Premier Inn, I made my way to Inverness Castle, the starting point for the North Coast 500. Hi folks and welcome to Camping on the Wild Side. Join me on this epic adventure as I take 20 days to do the North Coast 500 on my bike for the Trussell Trust. I have to say, the renovation work on the castle didn't make my send off very spectacular, but it couldn't be helped. This was what my months of planning and training was for. Using the West mapping system, I got this adventure underway. Crossing over the public footbridge, which spans the River Ness, it wasn't long until the busyness of the city was becoming quieter. And soon, leaving Inverness behind altogether. For the greenery, of the countryside. Looking at the weather forecast here, it's not looking good, so I reckon it's going to rain, so I better keep my jacket handy. Thanks for the weather forecast from the cattle. Now, back to more news. So I've just popped into Bewley on the way on my travels and I've popped into this little cafe and it's absolutely beautiful. Just such a nice little place, so cosy, warm, welcoming and it's called the corner on the square. So if you're passing by, it's worth a stop in. Well, I just timed that right. A nice, I thought I'd stop, and here we go, it just started to drizzle, so I actually think it's a passing shower. But we'll, we'll go with it. 
so yes, not been doing a lot of filming. Um, I've just been trying to get on. It's a nice, relaxed start to my first day. I've got 13, 14 kilometres to go, roughly, before I find my a sort of camping spot. Um, just at the back of me there is the A862, I think it is. And this is just a wee cycle path at the back. I've tried to cut across as many cycle paths and wee villages as I can just to get away from that A9 and the busy roads. So I thought I'd take a wee detour and take the scenic route. But, yes, it's a nice, it's a nice start to the adventure. And the countryside is just lovely here. The weather's a bit of a hit or a miss. It's nice and cool and breezy. Then the sun's out and then the drizzle. So we've got a bit of a mixture of everything to be honest. But I'm just going to take five here, have a drink, have a bite, and just take it slowly. So just up the road is Dingwall. Um, can't remember if I've been there before, but we'll soon find out what it's like as I pass through it. But yeah, hitting all these little villages. Day one of this epic North Coast 500 charity cycle wild camping adventure. Bit of a mouthful, but hey, we love an adventure, don't we? So yes, this is day one. I have left Inverness and got caught in a rain shower on the first day within the first 20 minutes of leaving. Hey, welcome to Scotland. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what can I say? I'm looking forward to it. I'm apprehensive. I'm anxious about it. I'm super excited. Buzzing. It, it's like, if, I'm feeling every emotion, to be honest. Because this is one of the biggest adventures I've done so far. And well, this woodland's just beautiful. This, this road. So basically, the, the first part, the first couple of legs I'm doing um, is from Inverness you can go straight up the road up to Wick on the A9 and I've seen some horror stories so yes I, I could have went up the A9 and I was on the North Coast 500 sort of group Facebook social media page and seeing some people commenting on people that do that and they're basically dicing with their life, to be honest. So, I thought, why not, let's just make this a good adventure and weave all the way through all these little villages and avoiding as much as I can of the A9. And look, look, this is it. This little back road and away behind me here, absolutely beautiful. So it's probably weaving back and forward off the North Coast 500, which is going to take me, that's why it's taking me a wee bit longer. 
that mean the weather's turning great now. Had the downpour, got that out the road, and here we are. This is just, this is just beautiful. Anyway, I'm all set for this adventure. If I've forgotten anything, too late. I have enough food for three days, but I'll keep topping up every so often, as you do. So looking forward to it. going to be quite a few fields like this. Absolutely beautiful. The smell. This is what it's all about. Just taking a minute out and just... Just slows you right down. So we've just stopped on this country road here. The first leg. And absolutely stunning just all these little woodlands and I've come across this little patch scattered with bluebells first leg of this North Coast Challenge adventure. Um, I'm right on the seafront here. Absolutely perfect. There's a bit of a breeze, a bit of a breeze, but I'm surrounded by gorse and broom and its smell is coming off it is just incredible. Absolutely love it. Um, I'm going to place my tent here and I'll get my bike padlocked together and all wrapped up, just snug away there so it just keeps out of eyes. I did speak to a local person here just to let him know that I was well camping and doing this as an adventure and he says it was okay. Um, it is a bit of a path. The time is late afternoon, evening and um, I don't expect a lot of people here, but you know, I'm here anyway. I'm trying to be as quiet as I can and as discreet as I can, just tucked into a little bush here. Um, what a lovely area. I Google mapped this and it's actually such a lovely bit. So yes, um, how has my day went? Well, I'm going to get food, I'm going to get coffee, I'm hungry and I'll let you know shortly. But for now, I need to get a tent up. So.
well, that's my, had my dinner. Um, it was the just a simple thing, a bit of rice and some smoked a smoked sausage, um, chili one. So I added a little bit of flavour to it, a little kick, which was nice. Such a beautiful spot. Um, yes, my day's events. I can reflect on my day. So set off at ten o'clock. And probably, I'm going to guess, and it was about 20 miles or so, um, cycling, checking the OS maps on and off. Um, actually went pretty well. Yes, there was some tough bits on it, so day one was really good. Bit of bad weather bit of wind and now we have glorious sun and I don't see any dark clouds again so fingers crossed that's it in nice for the night so yeah legs are a bit chipped to bits I have bruises I have scars already um, I have some wounds in day one and um, so God knows what they're going to look like on day 20 But anyway, they are Okay at the moment. I think I'll keep moving. I might just go for a wee wander down the Down the, the side of the water there and um, just to loosen them all off again uh, Tents all sorted um, I have my sleeping mat up and um, sort of Night clothes um, So all prepared just made a coffee and I've got a bit of a flapjack just to put some more energy back in. I've got some nuts and oat cakes as well, just to maybe top things up if if needed. It was a good day actually. Yeah, um, stopped in that little cafe, which was just nice, just to get a break, break up the the journey. Um, I tried to stay off that A9. I think I did stay off it actually. It was I didn't touch it. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably a good eye-opener just to avoid the A9 altogether. Um, it's not really a, a, a road for cycling on. There is a bit in a couple of days' time where I do actually have to connect with it. Um, yeah, I have got the lights and I have got the yellow waterproof cover for my rucksack, so I am doing as best as I can to be seen. But today was good, happy with it. I feel good now that I'm actually on the move. The build up, the the, the concern, the worries, have I forgot anything? Um, all the usual things that go around in a wild camper's head <laughs> when he's packing his bag and repacking it and smothering what tent to take, you know, it's all, all these things go through. So I've done it, I'm on the go. And basically all I need to do is um, top up with food and water every so often. So if I have forgotten anything, tough. So all that worry and anxiousness has gone out the window. Started this journey, this huge adventure, and I am looking forward to it. I'm just looking at 20 days ahead is actually quite daunting. So... I have broke it down to daily. I'm not looking any further than today. When I wake up in the morning, that's when I'll sort tomorrow out. Um, whether it stays like that or not, I don't know. <laughs> it might not. Um, but I'm so glad, after all the worry and concern about camping spots, that I have this one, because this is just perfect. Um, the tide's coming in a little bit there, so it's filling up with water. And I think I'm going to get a good sunset. Uh, yes. It's all looking good. Nothing major to concern about, I don't think. Um, 
probably my teething problem with OS Maps on the phone is when I stop at, for a break at a cafe or a shop for some reason you can stop your journey time so it stops clocking up your time um, and your journey time and sometimes I forgot to restart it so you, you say continue for your, your journey and it adds starts the clock again for your timing and a couple of I've done it a couple of miles and it just cuts a diagonal line straight for where you're actually you're at at that point so if you're a mile up the road it doesn't calculate that you've done that mile it just does a, a point from your last point to where you are now and it's a diagonal line straight to it so if you weaved all the way in and out places it cuts all that out and it goes straight to it which is a bit of a pain but I think that that's down to me and my fault anyway um, but actually if you plot your route with OS maps actually it's, it's pretty good um, I believe it'll get better as, as soon as I'm up and running with it it's the first time I've used it so yeah um, teething problems for my side um, but I think that will iron out as I go on so yes yeah, all good looking forward to a good sleep tonight actually um, I've got plenty of water I'll top up tomorrow at some point passing little villages and so on but tonight I'm just going to enjoy this whole day one and start just relaxing into it instead of making it an, an, an epic journey as it is I just want to slow down a little bit and take things easy and just enjoy the moment in time um, I think I'm always one for rushing about and wanting things done now and yesterday but it just helps when you get out while camping just to slow down that little bit That's the plan anyway. But for now, I'm going to sit here with my coffee and my flapjack and chill out and watch this beautiful scenery. Day one is officially over for me. I've had a lovely wee day and just relaxed the last couple of hours there. The water's come right up there, so it's pretty nice. It's probably still a bit of daylight left, but I think uh, my energy is zapped for tonight with that cycle. So I'm going to call it a night, just going to relax, read a book and hopefully have the best sleep for a while. But what a just a lovely spot, just absolutely I couldn't have picked a better spot for the first night. So, I will call it a night, and I shall see you fresh tomorrow.
morning everyone. Bit overcast this morning. There was a few spots of rain last night, but nothing came to nothing much. I think I was so overtired last night, I didn't have a great sleep. I was just tossing and turning all over the place, so... Um, yeah, it wasn't the best. But I've got 20, uh, 19 other days to find a good sleep. <laughs> anyway, nice sunrise this morning. Clouds are coming in a bit, so... I'm fingers crossed for a decent day ahead. I haven't checked the weather yet, but the sun is just about to hit some blue sky up there, so all good so far. A bit of breeze in the air this morning, and a little bit cool at the moment. And yeah, I'm going to get some breakfast, have a coffee, and get my gear packed up. But this is day two. Positive, lots of energy, once I've cracked all my body into shape, and yeah, we'll see where we are then. Well, that's me all packed up, all sorted. Fed and watered, camping spot all clear. I still haven't looked at the rain for the, the forecast for today. Um, I think it's just supposed to be scattered showers on and off, maybe a bit overcast, but there's blue sky out there. So, anyway, I don't know how long this jacket will stay on for because it might generate a lot of heat. So, day two on this epic wild camping adventure for the Trussell Trust. To the next spot. Now that's what you call a table. So just a wee update where I am today in the day two. Um, I left the camp spot and the first wee village I sort of came to to stop was Alness. Beautiful little village. And this is the view that I've got just now. Lovely view. I mean, I was just down round the corner there anyway, but working my way up. The next stop is Invergordon, which is a few miles up the road there. But even just passing these rape, oil seed rape fields, are just the smells just brilliant. But I should continue on to Invergordon for a It's just so nice listening to all their bird songs. Absolutely beautiful. 
so I've just left a little village called Milton. I'm on my way to, I think it's Ness Lighthouse, so that's where I'm heading. Um, I've just stopped in a back road here. Uh, I did have to join the A9 for a hundred yards and yeah, I was pretty, it's a bit of an eye opener I think, so I'm not looking forward to that further on in the next few days uh, where I have to actually use it for a, a small section. But I've just stopped for some lunch. I've just boiled up some noodles. I've got some um, oat cakes and cheese and just all the little bits and pieces. But yeah, what a lovely little place to sit and enjoy this lunch. Perfect. Simple food is sometimes just the best. This is a lovely beach at Shandwick, just south of Ballantour. A beautiful beach in a quiet little village. And doesn't it just look amazing? Now, I have a meeting with a mermaid. This is the mermaid of the north, here in Ballantour. Sits on a rock called Clash Du, meaning black rock in Gaelic. So the legend has it that a fisherman stole the beautiful mermaid to be his wife and hid her tail. Years later, after bearing children, she found her tail and escaped back to the sea, returning regular to the shore to bring fish to her hungry children. We love a good legend. Just cycled past a load of hens here and I don't know if you can see them in the background. All these hens, they're, oh, they're absolutely brilliant. Hundreds and hundreds of them in there, along with some alpacas or llamas or whatever there. And just past this little hut here, and it's selling all the eggs from the chickens. So it's just, what a great idea. And what such a lovely setting. Brilliant. Quality and fresh, and cheaper than the supermarkets. <laughs> I don't think you can get any fresher than that or any free range. They have got loads of space. They must be mega happy. There's tons of room in there for them. They must have so much fun. What a lovely setting. Carrying on to the village of Port Mahomic, it was a very quiet and beautiful place with yet again a stunning beach. Some shops with coffee and grocery store if needed. Bye. 
but we've only got a couple of kilometres to go before I can just settle down, hopefully. Check out this wild camping spot. And sure enough, not long, Tarbot Nest Lighthouse came into view. So, they can hear me, it's a bit windy, but this is Tarbot Ness Lighthouse and I'm going to try and do a wild camp just round the back of it, or at the front of it, towards the point. Tarbot Ness Lighthouse was built in 1830, after 16 vessels were lost some four years earlier. It's 53 metres high, and its light beam can be seen over 18 nautical miles away. This is pretty awesome. What a cool point. Actually, the ground is pretty reasonable for camping on. It is a bit blustery, so I'm going to need to tighten everything up tonight. Um, hoping the wind calms down a little bit. This is just brilliant. Apologies for the wind. It's a very remote corner. Well, it's a bit more sheltered here now. I've got the tent up, I've got the kit sorted, got everything ready, got my, my dinner ready for tonight. Something simple, just mashed potato and smoked sausage. Totally simple, easy to cook. Um, it is a bit breezy out there now. I've got a little sheltered spot against a rock here that's got a big mound which is buffering it. Cracking view as you can see. And what an amazing spot. I feel very hungry now. It's been a hard day. Feels like it's been a long day actually, very busy. Um, it was getting tough at the end of that, the last, I'm going to say the last 5-10 miles there, it was quite windy. Um, so I was pedalling into the wind which was quite tough going. But we've made it, the weather's good, just breezy, overcast, very sun, very sunny going to get a good sunset and and probably hopefully I should say hopefully fingers crossed in a good position for a, a good sunrise in the morning but yeah what a spot there's a couple of good spots for camping here um, it's not exactly flat flat but it's quite pretty decent actually I should say but what a view that lighthouse is amazing Anyway, I'm going to get my coffee, just take five, chill, take in the view, because everything's ready for tonight. Sleep, sleep mats up, sleeping bags out, um, basically already. That's me all fed and watered, watched the sun go down as much as I can. Um, it's still a bit blustery but it's actually really nice. Tides coming in, um, big swells and uh, it's absolutely beautiful out there. Just a sea of nothing. Um, so because that's me I'm just going to settle down big shout out to the Oban Whiskey and Fine Wine Shop um, who have gave me some uh, cans and these, these are just fantastic they're just just enough for what I need and how cute and dinky is that <laughs> 
What an excellent little can. Um, I don't like carrying big cans of beer or whatever when I'm away, but um, I thought these are just absolutely, I mean, you're probably talking three mouthfuls there, if, if that. But what a nice little end to the night. Um, they gave me some to try, and thank you very much to them, the Oban, the Oban, the Oban um, Whiskey and Fine Wine Shop in Oban, of course. So thanks very much to them guys. Um, of course I can open it with one hand. <laughs> This one is classic Cosmo, which is, I think it's, I can't read it actually, vodka, cranberry and lime. Well, here's to a second day of camp. This is going so good and my legs are still doing okay and I deserve a little drink, day two. Cheers everyone. Oh, I like that. Very nice. Good stuff. I will finish that shortly. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of chocolate as well. And that's me for the night. So, I'll call it a night. And catch you for day three. <laughs>